Hello there, Douglas V. Gibbs. Mr. Constitution here. Been a while since I've done a video. Been busy. We're going to try to get them out as often as we can. we got to catch up because there's a lot of stuff to talk about. So let's talk about H.R. 8404, Respect for Marriage Act, and how dangerous this is and how unconstitutional it is. So for the purposes of those of you on Constitution Study uh, Television at YouTube, uh, this will be filed under uh, the First Amendment and the uh, Tenth Amendment, uh, the First Amendment uh, saying that uh, the federal government may not uh, make any law. Congress shall make, not, make no law uh, prohibiting the free exercise thereof when it comes to religion. Then in the Tenth Amendment, power is not delegated to the United States in this Constitution, which marriage is not delegated to the federal government, nor prohibited by it to the states or reserved to the states respectively or to the people. So federal government has no authority to make this law. This law is unconstitutional. So that's right out the gate. That's the very first part of it. Second of all, when it comes to that, I say, well, Doug, it's a right. Uh, your marriage is a right. All right, well, if it is a right, then we'll, ad we'll address that in a second. But first of all, rights don't come from government. Government does not define rights. Our rights are determined based on God and what he says our rights are. They're part of the natural order of things because we have God-given rights. Now, for those of you who don't believe in God, fine, natural rights. You have them naturally, once again, part of the natural order of things. Now, that said, also, we go to the uh, Declaration of Independence, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. All right, fine. Being married to uh, someone of the same sex makes you happy, and you want to call it a right for that reason, fine then pursue it. But rights stop at the edge of somebody else's rights. And government has no business getting involved in our rights. That's the reason why the First Amendment begins, Congress shall make no law. When it comes to our rights, our rights are between us. The only time government gets involved is when between us, our rights collide. For example, I have the right to go through an intersection. So does everybody else. That's why we put in stoplights, so we can enjoy our right to go through an intersection without running into each other. But if I do run into somebody, now my right to go through the intersection is interfered with somebody else's right to go through the intersection, and a collision has happened. Therefore, government must be brought in to resolve the issue, to mediate between the two parties, and so forth. Now, when it comes to other rights, let's say, uh, you know, baking a cake. I have a right to have my cake baked exactly the way I want. Yeah, but also that person has a right not to bake the cake the way you want because of their religious beliefs. So, pursue happiness, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. You go elsewhere to get your cake baked. So, well, government, Doug, government, yeah. Government's not supposed to make a law prohibiting you or putting a barrier in the way of you pursuing somebody else to bake your cake. That's how it's supposed to work. So, when it comes to marriage, same thing. It's, you know, free market, right? A church should be able to decide if they want to marry or not marry. As for recognition by the government, that's not up to the federal government. The federal government has no authority for that. We went over that. All right, now I want to also bring up a couple of uh, aspects of this particular law. So first we're going to go to the uh, full faith and credit part of it. And, and what it, this is the part that is very dangerous. Because what it says is no person acting under the color of state law may deny full faith and credit to any public act, record, or judicial proceeding of any other state pertaining to a marriage between two individuals on the basis of sex, race, ethnicity, or national origin of those individuals, or a right or claim arising such a marriage on the basis that such marriage would not be recognized under the law. So, while it does not say this, and, and let me go to the other one real quick, because I, I want to make sure we don't uh, get confused here, because they do try to put a caveat in here. So it says that uh, there should be no impact on religious liberty or conscience. So they're, they're saying, hey, you know, if you don't believe gay marriage is a good thing, fine. We've put in here these, you know, things saying we're not going to diminish your religious liberty. All right, fine. Oh, I, oh, it makes me feel better, I guess. Until you then see it say, well, gosh, full faith and credit, though. No person acting under color of state law may deny full faith and credit to any public act record or judicial proceeding of any other state. So I believe, while it doesn't say this, it is opening the door for a state to say, hey, 
you have a marriage license because of the state allowing you to have it. So as a preacher, you're acting under color of state. Therefore, you are uh, prohibited from denying performing a marriage for a same-sex couple. So I think that's what this is going to lead to. And I think that's very dangerous. So, so first of all, unconstitutional. Second of all, our uh, our rights don't work the way they're op they're they're claiming. Co government's not there to protect your rights or guarantee your rights. They're, they're there to secure your rights. Preamble says secure the blessings of liberty, Declaration of Independence. To that to secure these rights, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men. In other words, keep them in place in our possession. They belong to us. Our rights. Government's job is not to make sure you get your right, but to not put up any obstacles so that you can pursue your right, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So, in summary, Respect for Marriage Act, H.R. 8404 is unconstitutional. Federal government has no authority to make this law. Of course, the one that's replacing the uh, Defense of Marriage Act was also unconstitutional, even though I, I agreed kind of with the language. It also was unconstitutional. None of the federal government's business. And in, in me personally, I don't even think it's the state's business. State government shouldn't even be involved in marriage. You know why marriage license were, licenses were originally issued? To try to keep blacks and whites from marrying each other in the South. It was to control marriage. And then, later on, it became so they could tax marriage. Marriage is not a government's business. Keep it among the churches. Keep it among the couples. None of government's business at all. But, from a constitutional standpoint, none of the federal, federal government's business at all. State can have its laws it feels are necessary. Well, Doug, what if a state you know goes off the rails and you know uh, uh, you know and, and and they're out of control, they're misbehaving. The federal government's got to put them in their place. No, it's up to the state. The, if, it's up to the people to keep those state under control, not the federal government. I know Fourteenth Amendment. Uh, those of you screaming that from original intent, the the state's business is none of the federal government's business. First of all. Second of all, I, I remember um, I had a, a commenter on politicalpistachio.com, my blog, and I had mentioned, you know, marriage, and it was regarding same-sex marriage at the time, gay marriage, homosexual marriage, which, whatever you want to call it. And um, and he says, well, Doug, you know, if it wasn't had been for such and such case, I can't remember the name of the case off the top of my head, you know, that federal court case that allowed interracial marriage, well, then you wouldn't be able to marry your wife. Well, my wife was born in Mexico. She's Mexican. Uh, she won't tell you she's Mexican. She'll say she's American. She naturalized and all that. That's beside the point. Um, and so, and my response was, you're right. The federal court case was unconstitutional. That doesn't mean that eventually a state might come to the decision to allow interracial marriage. And if a state doesn't, what's going to happen? People who want to interracially marry would not be members of that state anymore. They would lose so many people. They would think, hey, maybe we need to change our laws. Maybe they won't. That's up to the state. Just like when Proposition 8 in California that defined marriage between a man and a woman was defended, the, the, the uh, state courts held it, that it was constitutional because it was a constitutional amendment. Remember, this is California, deep blue, right? Yeah, right. Um, and a federal court, a federal court then, Ninth Circuit, said, no, nah, it's unconstitutional, you can't do that. None of the federal government's business. Now, if uh, Oregon says, hey, we want to allow people... Gay people marry uh, in this state, uh, then that's fine. But in reality, I'm a firm believer that it shouldn't even be up to the states. It should be up to the church. And the church should be you know, no different than a free market system, right? Oh, they don't have the product I want. They won't marry me. I'll go to another church. Maybe they'll have the pr It's like going to some store looking for a certain pair of socks. Oh, we don't carry socks. Oh, okay. Well, you, you don't then take them to, to court to force them to sell you some socks. They don't that they don't carry that product. The the church says or the cake baker says, hey, we don't carry that product. We don't deal with same sex. You want it? Find someone who carries that product. That's how it's supposed to work. All right, thanks for watching. My name is Douglas V. Gibbs, Mr. Constitution, DouglasVGibbs.com, PoliticalPistachio.com. And as always, remember, there's always funding needs. In fact, one of the things I'm working on getting towards is I want to have a resource and education center that people can come to 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 see videos and you know i've got artifacts that go all the way back to the you know, early 1800s you know little museum 
you know, have classrooms, uh, auditorium for events. I would like to be able to have that for the West Coast. We don't have it on the West Coast. They have Constitution centers on the East Coast. We don't have them out here. So that's one of my things. I always need to fund my radio shows. I'm on KMET 1490 AM, Saturdays from 1 to 3, live. KPraise, uh, KPRZ.com on Saturday nights at 9 p.m. Plus that show, Mr. Constitution Hour by Douglas V. Gibbs, is on all of the podcasts. You know, iHeart and you have Spotify and Odyssey and you name it. It's, you know, just look up Mr. Constitution Hour. Um, and you know, so th- there's, and you know, there's all kinds of things to be funded. I, I, I host six classes in Southern California. I teach homeschool kids, U S history and government. Um, and there's always funding needed. So if you want to help out douglasvgibbs.com, uh, for, uh, me and what I do, or if you want to help with the, uh, uh, legal work that the constitution association is doing constitutionassociation.com to donate there. Uh, that all said, thank you for watching until next time. United we stand, combined we kick butt. God bless America, my friends. God bless you. Stay constitutional. We'll see you next time.